Hello there, I'm just going to go through some of the planes and what they're called. Now, woodwork and planes have been about for centuries, but in the last hundred, couple hundred years, the pattern hasn't changed much. A few more details. It used to be mainly wood. Some had hardened soles, you know, a steel plate on, on the sole, some didn't. Most of them had um, a simple wedge assembly to hold the plane iron in, um, to set the, the depth of cut. But these ones here are a mixture of Record and Stanley. So we're going to go through them from the biggest first, which would be the jointer plane. And the one I'm going to show you is the Stanley Bailey number no. 7. It's about 560mm longer and 20, or, or compare it all, it'd be 22 inches long. They're 60mm wide cutter, so about 2.5 inch, I suppose that is. Um, and they're a very popular plane. Now, you can pick these up uh, used. Often they'd need some restoration work. This particular one I've installed. Victor plain irons, which are cast iron, hand forged plain irons in my number seven, but also in my number six. I've changed the handles so they're more suited to me. Much nice handles. And um, tuned it, which basically means making sure it's flat um, and that the frog and everything is uh, in the correct position. So this is my Stanley Bailey. Number seven. It is probably my favourite plane. It's a fantastic thing to use. Really is. I think it's used loads. I often pick this up instead of picking up one of the others, even though it really is a bit of an overkill. So this is great for putting a, um, a lead and edge on the door. It's good for that. But also what it's really meant for is to, for truing the edge of wooden boards so you can join them together. So, like for instance, you would use that for a tabletop, for instance. So that is the Stanley Bailey number seven. Fantastic jointer plane. I'll put one over there. Right, we then have the four plane. And this one is another Stanley Bailey, and it's the Stanley Bailey. Uh, sorry, this is not a Stanley Bailey, what am I all about? This, this one's a record. That one's the Bailey. <laughs> That's a Stanley Bailey, isn't it? And this is a record four plane. Yet again, I've put the Victor plane irons in, um, which are the hand forged ones, yet again from Sheffield in England. And uh, tuned up, done the usual truing up, what have you, because all these were um, second hand buyers. And um, it's got the new knobs, etc. Now, that's quite a sort of halfway house between the jointer and a jack plane. Now the jack plane, which we have over here, this is a jack plane. It's it's only um, 50 mil or two inches wide. It's a, quite a popular plane. Now it's pretty much a very similar format to the to the record or or the Stanley. They're very you know if you look at the pattern here, they're very much pretty much the same to be fair. Um, and uh, this is effectively just a smaller version of. Um, but yet again, still a very useful plane. It's quite a nice halfway house from having a smoothing plane and a four plane. So if you're going to have something you want to take around with you, like once you're going on site, something like this is actually quite a good size to have. It's great for doing a lead and edge on a door. Um, you can even throw up shortish boards. Um, you wouldn't want to do like long, two meter long or whatever with this, and you wouldn't do a great job. So that's the jack plane. Now these are the basic bench planes what we're going through first. Now the other one, which is the little baby John, um, oh yeah, the jack plane is the number five. Now this is my Stanley Bailey. Smoothing plane. It is pretty as stock. It hasn't had any mods to it, apart from um, true in the bottom up. Um, and frankly, it doesn't really need much more. I would like to put or to install some Victor plane irons, um, but they're not quite so easy to get hold of these days. So this is the number four, you can see a lot shorter. It's quite often a tool kit size, but this is your smoothing pan. Now, I'd use this mainly for 
Oh, well, putting the edge on a very short board. Um, but ideally, when you've done your jointing for a tabletop, it's great for cleaning up, leveling the boards on the tabletop. So that's what I would use the um, Stanley Bailey smoothing plane. Whether it was a Bailey, whether it was Lee Nielsen or Clifton, or even, oh, let's say for instance, I don't know, um, on X Minster's own brands, the Rider. Uh, they're pretty much all going to do the same job, some slightly better than others. But the principle's the same. So that is the smoothing plane. Another great tool. I have got a lot more plays than that, actually, but um, I thought I'd go through some of the basic ones, they're getting overly complicated. We then get into the realms of the uh, block plane. Now, the block plane is basically a small hand plane, a palm size or finger size, such as this little baby one here. This is a finger plane, yeah? For instance, that um, violin. My, um, carpenters or violin makers would use something small like this. Um, I never made a violin, so let's say no too much about it. Puff. That is a finger plane. Very simple method of height adjustment on the cutter or the plain iron. Um, literally, you've got a little screw here, you loosen that and you move your blade up and down until you've got it in the way you want it. It's, it's not a brilliant idea, but it, it works. It does work. Okay, so that is a um, little finger plane. Now the plane angle is very similar to the bench planes over here, but then we get into other realms of what we call a low angle block plane, such as this one here. This is one of, you know, it's not bad at all, but it's actually one of the cheap uh, Stanleys, um, not made like the, we're used to. Uh, you've got plastic knobs, this funny little straighted wheel thing here for you um, for locking the plane iron and the wedge um, it's, it's not the best thing to use but it still works it does work I can't get away from the fact it works it's just not so nice to use um, it's relatively low angle so it's a you know that's good for doing uh, short grain or end grain um, you'd still require a stop lock on your end grain so you don't split the end, end um, fibers so that is a Stanley uh, block plane. And normally on the Stanley tools, you normally have a number on them. And I can't even see a number on this. There's a pattern number on the side here, on the side that you get on all the Stanleys. Um, but I can't see an actual tool number. It's just, you know, that's quite unusual. So that's a Stanley block plane, low angle block plane. We then get into the realms of another little small. This one's quite old. And it's, it's a 0102, so this is actually quite a nice little tool to use. The quality is far superior over this one, obviously it's smaller, and it's quite a nice, nice little bit of kit. Uh, it's still got the wedge for the uh, blade adjustment, or the plane iron adjustment, um, like this one. Um, but this is not, it's just a nice bit of kit. So that is a record low angle, and it's a 0102. So let me get on to some other uh, low angle block planes. Now, which what are my go to's, as in these are what I generally use all the time. I don't. These low angle block planes are a little unusual. Now, if you look at this one, the front of that sole, which is, sole is the bottom of the plane, that area there is fixed. There's no movement, no adjustment. It's the mouth, which is the hole where the uh, plane iron comes out of. Uh, you, you can't make it small and you can't make it big. That's, that's where these come in. These low angle block planes, such as this little record pair, uh, has a adjustable forward sole. So you do, as I move that lever one way or the other, as you can see it opens up, or it closes down. Oh, what do I... <laughs> Sorry, it opens up. There we go. Bring it a bit closer, shall we? Okay, so I move that lever, you can see it closes down or it opens up. And what that allows you to do is actually take much uh, smaller amounts of material, less splitting. So if you're doing the end grain, you're less likely to split the end fibers if you close it right down. So it effectively um, 
prevents splitting or reduces it anyway, reduces it quite a bit. So that's the nice thing about these two. These have this adjustable forward sole. As you can see here, this little this little plane, it's actually had some damage where I dropped it from concrete once and I had to weld it. And it's a bit on the wonk, but it's still okay. Um, the height adjustment is done on this wheel on this record. And then you've got your skew on your so it alters the angle of the blade so you can make sure that the plane iron is parallel with the sole of your um, or with your sole of the plane. Um, so that's a great tool. So that is the record number, I think it's 06 or 09. But anyway, that's, that's a great tool to, to have in your toolkit. And then we have a Stanley version of it, which is narrower. They do a wider one as well, but it's just slightly narrower. And this one I inherited from my um, late father. Yet again, it has, I can actually remember when you bought this. Um, I was obviously very young. As an adjustable mouth yet again, just like the other ones, you can have it smaller or bigger. You can't close up quite as far as you can the record, but needless to say, it's far enough. It, it, it's a great tool. My father used to use it all the time, so that's great. Very, very good. The thing I do prefer about the, um, uh, the, the Stanley version is the, uh, the cap here. That's the cap. I find it a better design for locking on. It locks on much better with this little lever arrangement than on the record use a screw. And sometimes it seems to, after um, constant use, I find it wiggles the plane loose and, and then, then you've got to readjust everything, so it's annoying. So they're the block planes. Everybody should have at least one block plane. Okay. Let me get into the more specialist items. Now, like I say, I've got other ones as well, but these are just a few that I think I would um, you'd find more interesting, or more useful, I should say. Um, there's shoulder planes, and there's rebate planes. Now, a shoulder plane, such as this one here, which is quite an old bit of kit, this old um, uh, rec uh, record uh, 42, um, nicely machined, piece of kit and what makes these different is you can see this opening here all the way around is that the actual plane iron is almost like a chisel and it's it comes all, all the way to the edge of the sides of the shoulder these are the shoulders and this plane iron is flush with the shoulder just a slightly proud actually of, of the shoulders um, and what makes that different is that you can actually use this in a rebate, to clean up a rebate. So let's say, for instance, you cut a rebate on a piece of timber for a door or a window, and you want to clean that up. This is the kind of tool that you could use for that. Remember that it's only quite narrow, so obviously the depth of the rebate will depend on whether or not it is ideal to use. Height adjustment is at the back here. You also got the skew here as well, so you alter the angle. Um, and then this one here, this one here locks the iron in place quite substantially. It's a great tool, it's quite old now, but I do use it. I do use it. So, it's worthwhile having, but you might find you, you only use it once in a blue moon. There are other tools you could actually uh, find that might be better for you. And uh, one would be what we call the badger. The badger plane. Now this badger plane oh, no, um, also has the open sides here also allowing you to get right up close to a rebate. I'll demonstrate. So there's an old off cut, which has a rebate in it, a massive knot. <laughs> um, as you see here, basically what you can do is you can claim that rebate right up against that other that edge. Yeah, so right up against the rebate you can play. And the plane iron goes right to that edge. Where that's different to a like a smoothing plane here, the blade stops about five, six mil from the edge of the plane. And that can obviously prevent you from being able to play the rebate. It's not possible. You'll start planing and what you'll do is in the create in the angle. Things you have to be careful with these. Not, also, not quite so much with this shoulder plane over here, this other one here. But the badger plane, 
is that you, you've got to be very, very careful you don't drop it. Because all these other planes have additional reinforcement, additional strength. Because their shoulders are closed off here, Number 10, Badger Plane. You know, they always made in England, in Sheffield. If you've got to watch out with these, is that this is a very weak area. And if you drop the plane, you could potentially crack your casting at this point. Because that part there is the only bit holding the front of the Badger Plane, sole, and the rear of the sole together. So if you drop that a bit, you know, a bit heavy on that end, you could crack it along there. So be careful. So that is your Badger Plane. Very useful plane for doing rebates. That's a fantastic flat box. So you can see here. The plane iron comes right to the edge, right to the edge of your rebate. That allows you to claim the rebate. Not with that big knot on it there. So that is the Badger Plane. Another form of shoulder plane. Now Another quite interesting plane is a combination plane such as this rebate plane here. Now, uh, the rebate plane has a very simple arrangement. It's very similar to like the badger plane or um, the shoulder plane, but it has a fence. So that fence allows you to cut a rebate. So for instance, if you have two doors or windows um, coming, coming together, you might well have a half lap, which effectively is your rebate. So male and female on rebates. And you can create that with this. So the plane iron comes to the edge again. You also got a straight cut inside here as well to help um, create a clean edge and helps direction as well. And you can also um, have the bull nose. You can put an iron in the front here or there. So you get right up the end. So for instance, if you're just cleaning up the inside of the door frame and you're stopping because you've got the head of the door frame, you, you haven't got too much to do with the chisel afterwards. You know, it'd be quite easy because it's only going to be a half inch. So that is the rebate plane. Um, brilliant bit of kit again. Yeah, again, this is another Stanley. Finally, but by no means least, we have a compass plane. Now we all know compasses are for actually drawing circles or things that are round. Well, the compass plane planes in a circle either convex or concave. The moment it's in the concave mode. Now, I don't want to see that there. <laughs> this thin spring steel sole is flexible. And if I adjust this here, as you can see, it'll basically flex the sole, make it more concave. Or, if I want to make it convex, I can go, you have to do a convex I can go the other way, so if I go, I'm making it go in the opposite direction. So like for instance, the outside of the circle you could plane. What well, this is quite useful for is if you're doing handrails, the staircases, or um, if you've got a swept top rail on a gate, these are great for that. Now, this also used to be on surface. Um, brilliant look out. I've used it quite a lot actually. Um, not obviously not as much as these ones, but yeah, it, it's for me, uh, I couldn't do without it really for lots of jobs. Well, I suppose I could, but I choose not to because I've got it. And I'm not. So it's a great bit of kit, and that is the Compass Plane. Record of a version, I think there's, you can still buy these new, but there aren't many models out there you can choose from. But you can, there's quite a few of these floating about second hand that need a little bit of renovation. The thing you do need to watch out for. On these, if you do buy a second hand one and it's got a little bit rusty, you okay, you might be able to clean it up. Is this part here? There's a dovetail, the sliding dovetail. Now, that must be allowed to move freely in either direction. It can be fairly tight, but it, it needs to have some form of movement so it centralizes the, the front part of the blade. So, that is the Stanley Compass plane. Anyway, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe and comment below for any questions.